Today's episode is with Dr. John Jaquish. This is such a fascinating episode because Dr. Jaquish has his PhD in biomedical engineering. Um, and he's going to teach you today about the importance of bone strength and how we actually get it and how we don't and make, uh, make our bones stronger. He's a wall street journal, best-selling author, and he's an inventor, the inventor of the X three bar. So if you're in the fitness industry, you may have heard of that. It's actually quite incredible. Um, it's a variable resistance training device. Um, and it's also the world's most effective bone density building medical device. Um, he's going to open up by telling you guys about the, um, study that he just with NASA about bone strength, um, for astronauts, super fascinating. Um, I mean, Dr. Jaquish, wow. His, his like list of accomplishments just goes on and on. Um, he's a longtime partner of Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins actually wrote the forward to one of his books, unbreakable. Um, another book he has called weightlifting is a waste of time. Super interesting. He's going to tell you what he means by that in this episode. Um, he talks about working with, he's worked with dozens of professional NFL NBA, and MLB teams. Um, he has been the, on the board of directors for American bone health and the editorial board of steroids and hormonal science. I mean, it just goes on and on super fascinating. Um, I love how he's looking at patterns of the human body and then mimicking those in ways that we can actually strengthen ourselves. Um, so anyway, I think you guys will really enjoy this episode with Dr. John Jaquish. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away. And I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test, there's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So, um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So, um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios. Right. So, um, yeah, take advantage of it guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount onto you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Hey guys, before we get into the episode, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about higher coaching. This is my coaching system. And I get a lot of questions because, um, it's not just training and nutrition. We do that. I love training and nutrition, obviously, but we also do more. We do personal development and the way that's delivered is a 90 day personal development program that you go through with me when you work with me. So it's a video course with questions for you to deep dive in yourself for the first 90 days of working with me. Now that comes as part of a morning routine. I am really big on the morning routine and you ask any of my clients, I will push you on that because it's life changing. So we start with meditation and then we do gratitude and then that personal development program. Um, that's our deep dive psychologically. And after the 90 days, you go to the next level, you start doing what I'm doing currently. And it's a lot of strategic goal setting and it's really, really honestly, miraculous what's happening, not only in my life, but in my clients' lives. Like it brings me to tears when I get on calls with them. I'm like, do you see yourself? Like, do you see what you're doing? That is so cool. So anyway, that is um, for me, the bread and butter of my coaching. I love it so much. Um, also though, in, in regards to your body, I also like to go deep dive and see what might be holding you back. So that's where all the biohacking side comes in. We do a physiological deep dive as well. So we do blood 
testing, hair mineral testing, DNA testing, body composition, or a ring, um, so your heart rate variability, your sleep cycles. Do you have any deficiencies? Do you have issues with sleep you didn't even know about? Let's find out, you know? Um, so that's that's how I approach things in higher. There's more, we do prizes every month, Nikes, Lulu's, um, all my favorite products and foods to keep you motivated, to keep those habits up. We do three Zoom calls a week so you get support. We have a private Facebook group. We're all vibing and, and cheering each other along the way. We get raw and real and honest. And it's just, yeah, it's like I created my life and I created my life the way I like. And I like to deep dive with a bunch of bad A people that really want to optimize their lives. And it's an honor for me to serve them in that. Um, so I just thought I would tell you about it because I don't know if I talk about it quite enough. So if you're looking for that, if you're like wanting the next level in your body and also in your life, truly, that's what we're doing. So uh, seeking bad A's <laughs> to join higher. I do have some spots open. Um, it is limited. I can only handle so many clients at a time, but if you would like to find out if it's a good fit for you, you can go to my website, taragarrison.com and you can request a call and we can see if, if it's a great fit for you. Um, and yeah, I, I just wanted to tell you guys about higher so you could get a little glimpse into what I'm doing on the daily. And if you're looking for something a little more self-guided, I do have my keto in and out program, um, on my website. Site. So you can either do a small taste and try it for eight weeks, or you can go a full year. That baby is comprehensive. There is a video of every recipe, video of every exercise. There's a 60 day course teaching you how to do keto or 30 days of keto. And then 30 days of bringing back the carbs, FAQ video library, Facebook group, like all of that. So if you're more of like the self guided person and you just want stuff planned for you, um, that is also an option on my website. It's taragarrison.com. I'll link it all in the show notes and all right, we'll go ahead and get into our episode. All right. So Dr. Jayquish, thanks for being here today. We have like so many different areas we can go because your career is like, it's just has built and built and built. Obviously we can talk about your books. We can talk about the research, the boards you've been on the X three bar, like, wow. But I want to start off. Um, we just spoke briefly about a paper that you published recently with NASA. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so some people from NASA were doing an analysis on my first invention, the bone density mm. medical device, and uh, they found it to be extraordinarily effective for very rapid building a bone. And what was mm. different about the study is they looked at bone turnover markers and, and blood tests. Mm -hmm. And uh, like that's not the preferred way to look at bone density, or it has not been in the past. But I believe it's going to be in the future because you can affect bone. So this has more to do with the trend, what direction your bone is going in. Mm -hmm. But the previous way to look at it was DEXA scan. Right. And the DEXA I just had one yesterday. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Dual x-ray absorbiometry is what that mm -hmm. stands for. And so there's two x-rays and they combine to sort of look through the bone. But do they really? Not really. Um, mm -hmm. They get a good aggregate of bone material but they can't tell you the difference or define what's going on in the, in the trabecular bone, the middle versus mm. the outer cortex. Mm. So, you know, it's just like, yeah. Murder. Okay. Like, like what, what's the temperature today? Well, if there's a hundred mile an hour winds, that's going right. to change if it's a good weather day or not. So mm. just by asking the temperature, you don't have the whole story. Yeah, I see. Same so, thing with bone. And, you know, you, you basically get a look at the outer cortex more so than, than the trabecular. And the trabecular is the trend. It's the, that's where development is, is hmm. happening. Right. And Adexa can't really see it. Very. So that's why this study was so profound. And it found um, an almost 40% uh, increase in the growth and the formation marker of the bone and a 41% decrease in bo old bone breakdown. So you're keeping wow. the older bone longer and you're building new bone faster. And Can so you tell us a little bit about how that, how that works? Do we know like what's why, what yeah. causes it? I mean, I just did, but, but I mean, like, what are, so what are these detailed. I'm going to bore everybody. Well, no, I mean, just what, what, what about the blood markers you're talking about? Like, can you give us so some hints the, on some the of those building, um, formation markers and you ask your doctor for this is like BAP or okay. P1NP mm. are the two most popular, 
uh, bone marker test, but it's just an accurate look at what's going on in your bone. Mm -hmm. And like you have an anabolic growth level going on in the bone. And then you have, and before you're 30 years old, it looks, you know, like this, where your anabolic level is higher than your catabolic level, which is the breakdown. Mm -hmm. Then when you get older than 30 years old, those two things reverse positions. Hmm. And you start losing at a faster rate than you are gaining. Wow. And so the objective is to turn that around. Wow. So yeah. We do that with postmenopausal population with, uh, or, or people who are contact athletes and they need to build higher, higher levels of bone density. Um, so there's a number of different applications, but, uh, and I'll, I'll read you the quote from the study. It was in the journal of aerospace medicine, <clears throat> which is the top journal in the field. And what the study said, and uh, my favorite quote here is if, so they call it an exercise apparatus. It's a medical device. It's found at osteostrong location. If the exercise apparatus could be condensed to the size of a shoe box to meet the weight and volume restrictions imposed by NASA, it could potentially serve as a countermeasure for bone and strength loss in exploration vehicles. So about three years ago, I spoke on a panel with a couple of astronauts and some of the medical staff at NASA to talk about how do we get astronauts to Mars. Mm -hmm. And there's the two biggest hurdles are radiation poisoning and loss of bone. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I believe, of course, I mean, you, you read what the paper said, yeah. heard what the yeah. paper said, like they're, they are recommending this method, this technology. That's amazing. Yeah. That's got to feel pretty good. <laughs> You're like, it man. Pretty good. And um, I, so I got to do something custom for them because like, and I don't remember where I heard this statistic and I, and I didn't read it. I heard it, uh, which makes me question its accuracy, but the mm -hmm. ball in ballpark, it's there. Now my, my father designed and built a lunar rover for NASA. Oh, wow. Uh, so, so he knows a little bit about the weight in a space exploration vehicle and especially, you know, you know, long, yeah. long distance. We're going to go to Mars. We've got to bring a lot more shit, right? Right. A lot right. more food, tools, yep. uh, supplies, whatever. I mean, the water gets recycled, but you know, other things don't. So, uh, you need to bring a lot more stuff with you. But the lunar roving vehicle was incredibly lightweight. It would mm. actually crumble if assembled on Earth. Oh, wow. It was designed specifically to be assembled on the lunar, oh. with lunar gravitational pull, which is much lower than the, than the Earth. Amazing. So, um, yeah, getting a wine bottle into space would cost another $100,000 in fuel to be able to lift the weight of that wine bottle. Wow off the surface of the earth. Oh. Right. That's wow. How it is. Yeah. So that, wow. You know, some if it's something they need, they need it, but it needs to be condensed in size. It needs to be condensed in weight. And uh, so, so for some context, if, for people who aren't familiar with the exercise apparatus, <laughs> can you tell them a little bit more about that? I think you have one in front of you, the regular X3 bar. Yes, yeah. for people watching yeah. on YouTube. And, Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I'll tell you about the X3, sure. Yeah. Um, so when doing the bone density medical device research, it became very apparent when I'd be taking postmenopausal females through this pre-study and then during the study, I couldn't take anybody through because obviously I have a bias. So mm -hmm. I was there from a methods section standpoint only. So I authored the method, method section. The mm -hmm. methods of the study are like how the study is performed, who was selected, you got to pick the right population. Mm -hmm. You got to use the device, medical device correctly. Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of things that are, can be used incorrectly. It was also a little more arcane back then. Mm -hmm. It was a little more prototype than production. Okay. Uh, so, you know, the software was ugly and mm -hmm. hard to understand. And we needed the principal investigator and the other technicians who were going to be putting people through their osteogenic loading sessions. So to mm -hmm. emulate high impact. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, so in the study, like the, some of the test subjects that were uh, randomly chosen were physicians at the hospital. And this was at the in, right the hospital right next to the University of East London, so it was uh, the research was all done in London, 
And uh, so we, we needed these British government officials to be rec recording the data because it'd be easier to talk to the British government about applying this in, in, their, in their hospitals, uh, especially because it's, it's, those are social health care. So they're paid for by the government. So that, you know, it'd be really great relationship if we could, mm -hmm. we could establish that and that's well on its way. It's going well. Mm -hmm. um, but the, uh, these, the physicians who got chosen for the study, they would say, what do people actually lift? Cause we're lifting like eight, nine times our body weight. <laughs> and there is an answer to that. The American college of sports medicine, uh, pulls from the NAMES database, uh, which is the largest collection of health data. And so, like, I, I went to the NAMES database and I looked at what people load on average in their lower extremities. It turns out the unfit person is 1.3 multiples of body weight and the fit person is 1.53. Oh, wow. And it just so happens that we know what the minimum dose response for loading the lower extremities and bone growth is. It's 4.2 multiples. Of oh, wow. So when you lift weights, you do nothing for a bone. Hmm. No. Wow. Now, if you do high impact activity, like box jumps or something like that, that can have an influence on bone, hmm. but it's because of the impact. The impact will give you a lot more loading than weightlifting will. Wow. And so like certain weightlifting programs, they can have a bunch of weightlifting that they do, but that's all irrelevant as long as they add in like the box jumps and land. It's more the landing. The jump doesn't do anything for bone. It's the back jumping. Really? Off. Yeah, it's the impact. That's so interesting because in some of the uh, certifications I've been through, like they're against the back jumping off because people will tend oh, to yeah, hurt you themselves. Step down. It's like, really, <laughs> yeah. You took all the effectiveness out of this. But that's the fitness industry. It's just yeah. giving giving direction with no understanding of what you're talking about. Yeah. That's like super that. interesting. Huh. Right. Like people still say cardio is great for weight loss. No, it isn't. It's probably the worst thing for weight loss. <laughs> it just makes you hungry. Cardio <laughs> will keep you fat or longer. Yeah. yeah. I, I lived, lived it, lived it. It's no, yeah, you're preaching sure. my message. <laughs> I think oh, most women did. For 40 years, you know this. For 40 yeah. years, science mm -hmm. is documented. And like I go around, I'll, I'll say this at, you know, a big box gym or something. I'm doing doing a lecture, and people are like, "Well, that's what, how we tell people. How are you supposed to lose weight if not cardio? There's caloric restriction. There's fasting. I realize that has nothing to do with your business. You guys sell the use of treadmills because that's all you have. Mm -hmm. But you got to push strength training more. Yeah, because a metabolic engine that is running all the time in the body, burning calories, especially when you're at a deficit or if you're fasted, what is that? What is the one engine in your body, the one organ you can double the size of? There's only one and it's skeletal muscle. You mm. can't double the size of your heart. If you do, you're probably dead. Uh, you know, so it's like, that's the thing we have influence over that is really going to control our, uh, our level of body fat. Yeah. Not to mention being just being more insulin sensitive. And well, when yeah. you go actually do it, you're using up some of the glycogen, creating space for food instead of it mm -hmm. all going to fat stores. And yeah, I mean, that's a huge part of my message. I was a marathoner, an overweight marathoner forever. And then I let that go. Many and of them are. It, what's that? Many of them are. because Yeah. That's just like what them. we were raised on is like, Oh, I'm fat. Go run. It's like, I mean, I, my mom was a, like a world champion track athlete. So I, my experience was a little different running with her growing up. It was like a, a passion for sure, but it was not an effective fat loss strategy. Uh, I have four kids, you know, and after a little bit of finally lifting weights and cutting way back on the running, my entire body transformed. So, I mean, you're preaching my message completely. I am mm -hmm. such a huge advocate of weight training and things like isometrics, overcoming isometrics. And I'm wondering if you can explain, cause I know some people listening to this, they won't know what the X three bar is. Can you kind of explain through words, basically how it works, what, what yeah. it actually is. So I developed another product outside of medical device um, that would provide the strongest level of variable resistance. It's an elegant product. It's very simple. It's incredibly heavy latex banding. And when I say heavy, <laughs> I don't mean, I mean, like most bands carry 20 pounds of force. Uh, our heaviest band is uh, 600 to 800 pounds, depending on how tall you are. Uh, but like the, the, typical, the typical female that if they're gonna do an overhead press, 
they may grab a 20 pound bar like full like you know the, the pre-linked up ones not not an olympic bar yeah um and and they'll do overhead presses with 20 pounds well you can handle 20 pounds at the bottom but you can handle 100 at the top mm, i love that right and so yeah. what x3 does is because of the banding but also keeping your wrist neutral so when you go to hold the bar over your head it's not twisting your wrist that's the whole reason why an olympic bar is probably the only good fitness innovation there has ever been uh until now of course uh no bias <laughs> but um the olympic bar was brilliant because it doesn't allow your wrist to be twisted like these are the, some of the smallest bones in the body outside the bones in the ear which i'm not really counting and and in the ankles and if we go to interface with a resistance training apparatus it's got to keep wrists and ankles neutral bands by themselves don't and they will hurt you mm -hmm. and you know if you try and use like an x3 band without the bar and without the plate you might break an ankle yeah like, yeah so basically the band doesn't happen again the band goes underneath the plate. You stand on the plate and then it hooks up to the bar and you can like overhead press the bar. And he's not kidding. Like uh, my, my friend, Aaron brought one to my house when she was visiting. She's like, you got to try it. She was talking about it the whole week. Hold on. I can't leave until you try the X3 bar. I want you to try it. <laughs> and wow. Right. I was impressed. Cause when I train people, what one thing I'm looking for is like, I want to see that shake. I want to see that their nervous system is not yet capable yeah, of firing me. efficiently for what the load that they're giving it. That's the sign mm -hmm. of progress. And I'm man, I was like, Oh, this is no joke. Oh, you're not just like going through the motions. Like sometimes I say people aren't lifting. They're just moving. I'm like, if you're just like effortlessly oh, going up and down, like you're not right. lifting weights. That's not really. They'll training. talk while they're lifting. They're talking. Yeah. They're like, like in a conversation. <laughs> I say yeah. that all the time. I, I get mad about it. I'm like, if you're going to be like doing lateral raises and talking about your weekend to your friend, go home, come back when you're ready. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, um, cause you're not, cause you're wasting your time. And then you're like, what? I work out six days a week. I'm like, no, you don't. You didn't work out one day of those weeks. Right. <laughs> you were just moving. <laughs> like, I, mean, right. I guess it's better than sitting at home eating Doritos. Well, when but... <laughs> it comes to developing the body, there's no getting away from heavy. Yeah. And yeah. so that has to do with a mindset the understanding of how you really need to fatigue the body with a heavy force. Yep. But X3 allows you to train heavier with more repetitions because the weaker range becomes offloaded. And yeah. then you fatigue that with diminishing range. So the reps get shorter and shorter yeah. as you begin to fatigue. So, you know, when I do a chest press, mm. uh, it's 550 pounds at the top. It's 300 pounds in the middle and it's 100 pounds at the bottom. Right. So I hit that 550 pounds, maybe 20 times, which I would never be able to do with weights. I'd never be able to get the benefit of contracting against 550, 20 repetitions. That, then that, in that position, in that impact ready position, that is the benefit. I am stimulating myofibril adaptations by doing that. And then the balance of the repetitions are more about exhausting the sarcoplasm I'm holding in the cells. Mm -hmm. So I'm burning ATP, glycogen, and creatine phosphate. Uh, that's what sarcoplasm holds. And then, so as I'm burning those fuels, I'm still simulating the body to store more fuel there. So I'm growing from two perspectives. Mm -hmm. And then uh, by keeping hypoxic, by evenly loading the muscle, which you can only do with variable resistance and really X3, because most of the other approaches to variable resistance are so weak. You know, there's like, it's like you're holding X at the bottom and 1.2 X. Whereas with X3, it's X at the bottom and 5X at the top. So yeah. it, and I've, I've yeah, worked, it, it's got to be the right ratio of variance. I've worked out at gyms. Uh, what's that brand of machines that has the variable resistance? You know what I'm talking about. It's like a machine and a gym. I can't remember the name There's of that company. Couple. I can't remember the name uh, of the company Medex. right now. What's that? Medex, one of them. Medex or, mm. or Nautilus or mm, the original Nautilus actually. It might be not. Yeah. Uh, 
but Wait. I've worked out with machines that have variable resistance. And I'm like, it is not even fair. It is like an unfair advantage to have variable resistance. So you can make it harder at the bottom or the top or whatever, you know, and then you go to this rinky dink gym machine. It's not the same experience, but what's cool about yours is that you can travel with it. So I've, I've recommended your product to my clients who travel. They're like, what should I do? Especially like men that need to go heavy, but they're traveling and they go to these like little gyms in the hotel. And there's like, it goes up to 25 pound weights. Like it is a really, really cool solution for people who travel or just what you want, like a in-home gym. That's like super small. Mm -hmm. It's a really cool solution for that. Cause it's what, do you know how much it weighs? I mean, it's, it's, you can totally pack it in a suitcase, obviously with the whole NASA thing. I mean, that one's 12 pounds. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, okay. You want to talk a little bit about, uh, Tom Brady. So I've seen Tom Brady is using the X3 bar, Gronkowski using the X3 bar every day. You want to talk about that a little mm. bit? <laughs> you know, there's a lot of pro athletes that use X3. Some of them have given me written permission to use their image on the website for free. Mm -hmm. And those guys are just cool. Yeah. But other guys, you know, their brand is worth so much. They, they just don't feel that they can do that. And some of them may give me an outrageous offer that nobody would accept. Mm. Uh, so, you know, if I don't have permission, I can't, I can't talk about who uses it, but there are at least 10 that I know of top, absolute top best athletes in the world that are using X3 exclusively now. Mm. But, you know, like, and even when, you know, let's say like an action movie star that everybody knows and loves, for you know throwing people through windows and he's you know big and strong <sighs> like i can't like i can't do you know do a deal with these guys and then also you got to wonder like you get a paid endorsement like i like the unpaid ones they just like it yeah a paid yeah. endorsement and it's just like well does that really mean anything yeah kind of comes becomes like a transaction if I, if I write somebody a five million dollar check what does that say does that mean they love it? Or does that mean they want $5 million? Right. Probably right. the latter. Right. So totally. everybody who gives the thumbs up to X3 was not paid to do so. And we have uh, over 30 professional athletes and the entire Miami Heat basketball team. In fact, on the book, weightlifting is a waste of time. You turn over and look, look at the back of it. There's the Miami Heat's endorsement. They actually let me use their name. That's cool. And NBA teams don't do that. So yeah, speaking, really cool of them. Speaking of working with, you know, professional athletes, um, I also wanted to ask you about you know, Tony Robbins uh, wrote the intro, I believe, to your book, Unbreakable, um, with Kyle, I'm going to butcher his name, Zag Zagrotsky, is that how you said? Zagrotsky, you got it right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, can you tell us, um, one, can you tell us about the book, Unbreakable, and two, can you tell us about your experience with Tony Robbins, because I'm a little bit of a, a fangirl, I'm not going to lie. Okay. <laughs> uh, Tony? Uh I'll start with the experience. Tony is in real life. Tony is exactly the same person he is on stage. He yells all the time, like <laughs> just or like screams, like just <laughs> ah, like that's how he communicates. <laughs> and uh, like you'll go over to his house for like a fifteen-minute meeting, mm -hmm. and you'll be there the entire day. You'll leave at midnight. Like you'll put in like a <laughs> like a instead of a fifteen-minute meeting, it turns into a fifteen-hour day <laughs> where you like. Eat a meal there, and you're like ice plunging and like oh yeah, oh yeah, the whole time. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah. He has a custom cryo tube and an ice plunge. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like the cryo tubes; they take too long. And I think people think they're extra tough. They're like I was standing in negative two hundred twenty, you know, nitrogen. I'm like, no, you weren't. The Are gas you... came out in negative two hundred twenty, but by the time it contacted your skin, mm. you're radiating heat, so it balances out at like thirty degrees. Hmm. Like it's really not you're not you're not that cool are you an ice plunge fan yes cold plunge cool yeah me too uh, I've, i I've was also... in, i oh, was in um i was in reykjavik recently and we broke through the ice and just jumped in the sea that is amazing that's right. cool i'm a big wim hof fan too so that yeah, resonates yeah. with you me i love cold so tough after you do that what's that you feel so tough and also like yeah the idea like i remember i was a little kid i grew up in san francisco and or, you know right 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 by there um and we'd be on the bay all the time sailing or, or whatever and it was like well if you fall in the water you're gonna die 
And I'd be I know. like, Are you sure? Because I know. Have fallen in the water before. And some <laughs> guys supposedly swam from Alcatraz to. I know. Escape. And then Wim Hof shows up and he's like, actually, I'm not only going to fall in it, I'm going to go half the length of a football field in one breath underneath of it. <laughs> it's so now, amazing. There's, it's, uh, it, the, those rumors were so ridiculous that uh, now there's a triathlon that goes mm. from Alcatraz. You know, like, <laughs> wow. Now, like, everybody does it. Like, you know, the chubby soccer moms do it. It's like, okay. So, <laughs> no, granted, they're, most of them are wearing wetsuits, but I do know a couple open water swimmers that just wear like swim trunks. Wow. And they just swim in the bed. Yeah, that, for like an hour. No that's problem. A, that's amazing. So, how did you yeah. get hooked up with Tony? He called me. Mm. And because he heard he- through one of, one of his coaches. Uh, guys like like he was barely able to walk and then he was he's a big golfer and then he uh tony used to live on a golf course um in palm desert it's by palm springs okay and so his friend you know waved waved at him was golfing by and, hey tony i haven't seen a little bit and tony looks at him he says you couldn't even walk the last time i saw you and you're playing golf right now Mm. yeah i found this machine mm. that like completely fixed my joints mm. and like all my arthritis is all my osteoarthritis like doesn't do as much for rheumatoid arthritis for various reasons they're very different dysfunctions so they shouldn't even have the same mm. name but um you know, the guy was a broken man and he went back to being like a normal man he's like you know who who, ha- who owns this thing who owns a company uh, and he's like oh it's a scientist he called me some scientist kid uh it was 10 years ago so i guess 13 years ago well i was a kid back then so uh you know he he uh he just calls and he's like i want one of your devices and i just thought it was some crazy person i'm like yeah well i only have two prototypes i need them both so i would have to custom make one and the cost of building another prototype is a little over three hundred thousand dollars and the guy on the other end of the phone who had a very distinctive voice was like I'll buy one for 300,000. And I said, who is this again? Yeah. He laughs and he says, this is Tony Robbins. Oh, that's where I recognize the voice from. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm guessing you're serious. You wouldn't waste your time with this phone call. You didn't want one. He says, I want one. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll install it in your house and we'll go over it together and I'll show you and your wife how to do it. Uh, and it'll be awesome. And this is like, your, I this is awesome. Awesome. Sorry, this is Osteo Strong. Is this the device you're talking about yeah. with Tony Robbins? Can yeah, you describe that our, that what that is? Our, yeah, it's a bone compression device. It puts compression on the axis of a bone. So from end to end. Uh, and we are very powerful when we're just short of the axial formation of bone. Hmm. So meaning like, like 120 degree angle of inclusion between upper arm to lower arm. Hmm. Very powerful there. And this is how I discovered the, you know, the optimized positions, the impact ready positions, I call them because it's, that's how they're seen in gymnastics where, where the, some of the most, the highest loads go through the human body in impact. Hmm. We want to emulate impact. Very cool. You know, it's like a gymnast lands with 120 degree angle behind their, their knee. Wow. Yeah. They don't land straight legged. They shatter everything. Right. 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 Yeah. Wow. Super insightful. What, what made you so interested in bones? Where, where did this My begin? My mother was diagnosed with osteoporosis and she was mm. suffering and she, mm. she liked to garden and she liked to hike and she played tennis and she was very active in her seventies. Mm. And I was like, well, now she doesn't want to do anything. She wants to hide in the house. And I was like, wow. well, that sucks because I mean, even though she's in her 70s, she doesn't look or seem like an old lady at all, but she was just terrified. She's like, if I get a hip fracture, I get a 50% chance of death uh, within a year. And it's true. Wow. 50% chance of death uh, because of the confounding factors. You know, you get pneumonia in the hospital, you can't heal up, whatever. Infection um, after the age of 50. 50% chance of death after the age of 50. Wow. Hip fracture. So <clears throat> she was just terrified. And I said, well, what if I can fix it? Because I had an idea. 
Mm. And so I built a prototype and applied my idea, treated my mother. 18 months later, she had the bones of a 30 year old. Wow. Yeah. So your, your dad was, was a great video on my Instagram. Okay. Yeah. We'll and have to see it guys. He my has mother and I on, uh, on, uh, one of the Fox, uh, programs. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to look Mother's it up. Day. It was like what kids do for their mothers. Oh man. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that now. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. guys on Instagram, I'll tag it in the show notes, but I mean, you've got over a million followers on Instagram, so it's not a, not a small account there. Um, and lots of really good value. I was flipping through it and I was like, dang, okay, <laughs> this guy is well-established. And I, I wanted to hit on another one of your books. Um, weightlifting is a waste of time that you co-authored with Henry Alkire. Is that how we say his last name? All right, great. He's got it up here on the, on the YouTube weightlifting is a waste of time. Can you tell us about this book? So it lays out what the problems are with regular weightlifting. Once I realized that we can handle seven times the amount of force in the most powerful range of motion, the impact ready. Like if you trip and fall, how do you brace yourself for the fall? In those biomechanics, you you handle seven times the force absorbing impact than you do in any other formation while holding resistance. Well, I mean, knowing that, it means we're hardly fatiguing anything when we're in that range of motion or even halfway there. Yeah. It really means weightlifting is a waste of time. Interesting. Because you can't stimulate the body to any significant degree if you've chosen a weight you can only handle in the weaker range of motion, which is what everyone does. That's what weightlifting is. So what we need is a weight that changes as we move. So like I said, in the chest press, it's 100 pounds at the bottom, which is very light. But also remember, this is the most compromised position. This is where we damage joints. So it's lighter there. It gets to 300 pounds in the middle, and then it gets to 550 as I come close to the top. And that's what we, that's what we use to fatigue the body to a much more profound degree. And when you get that level of fatigue, you trigger a massive amount of growth. Wow. That's super interesting. Yeah. If you think of like a, a bench press, but you think of it at, instead you're falling flat on the ground. And so the most force is right when your hands hit in that little bit more extended position, and then it slowly becomes less and less. That's a really, I like the way you, you look at things, you're following patterns of what would happen naturally. You're looking at the gymnasts, how they land, you're looking at our bodies, how they would fall. And then you're mimicking that in a way that can help us become stronger in that same pattern. Right. It's really cool. You know, it's, it's funny. Like I, I laugh at the term functional, you know, this is a functional exercise. Well, a muscle shortens. So anything we're shortening a muscle is functional. Yeah. So, and people figure that out and they use all kinds of stupid exercises and say, this is functional. Now, what they're really, I think, attempting to say is this is a movement pattern that humans engage in a lot. And by practicing it, we'll have better biomechanics, we'll have better balance and better biomechanics and better balance means your nervous system will allow you to lift heavier. Yeah. Because like a lot of people are like, if you're off balance, your body won't even allow you to lift what you even potentially could. Right. Right. Beginning weightlifters only activate a small fraction of the musculature that they could, but like Mm -hmm. people at a high level, they activate all of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. So just just the from a potentiation standpoint, like activating. Yeah. That's yeah. like you 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 really got to be be able to activate. Um, so what the book is about is showing the biomechanical inefficiencies, also explaining why some people their biology allows them to get incredibly strong and grow from weights. Mm. But the majority of people don't have this at all. And it really has to do with tendon layouts. Hmm. You know, if, you're, if your tendon has a, has a longer distance to the insertion point, so like, like your pectoral attaches at your sternum, that's the same with everybody. Mm-hmm. But the mutation doesn't have it attach at you know, just where the bicep starts. That's normal, like most people have the attachment point just under the bicep on the humerus bone. Some people have a mutation where it's at the other end of the bone, hmm. it's far away, which means they have a longer lever arm. 
Right. The longer the lever arm means they can produce more power in that awkward position of the bottom, the bottom wow. of the lift. So those are the people who become NFL players. Those are the people who become strength athletes. Hmm. Um, right. Wow. And so what's the difference? Like you, you look at some NFL players and they look, you know, and they're drug tested like crazy. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, I hear the steroid excuse all the time. And it's what every loser says who's never been able to like yeah. get, get any results. I shouldn't say look because a lot <laughs> most of the bots are just given well, the losers because they're jealous. Yeah, right. And not complain like everybody who's bigger than me is on steroids. Right. Like or say. victimizing. My dad yeah. didn't practice with me enough or <laughs> something like right. that. Right. Yeah. Or like, you know, like um, you know, how like uh, overweight women, I've heard this. So they'll, they'll call every conditioned woman like anorexic. Yeah, right. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like you got a little twinkie right here. Um, you know, just like, like unwilling to admit what the problem is. Yeah. So yeah. And uh it's okay to be tired of these people because they've been making excuses for themselves. We we need to do something in society to end self-imposed victimhood. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's a victim. huge problem. Yeah. Even no. if you want, stop. Right. And don't Go. worry about what other people do. Worry about you. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. winners um, focus on winning, losers focus yeah. on winners. Yes. Uh, right. Amen. And I love what you're bringing to the table because you're bringing in just like a, a whole nother dimension that really hasn't talked about that much in the training or training industry or no. athletic performance. No one's right. talking about where your tendons are attaching. <laughs> like as research here. See, but this is like the this is like the cardio thing. Cardio is like the worst way to lose weight, lose body fat. You'll lose muscle, so your body weight will go down. <laughs> but you know, it's, up regulates cortisol long term cardio. Yeah. So, and what does that do? It gets rid of muscle and encourages you to store more body fat. So you stay fatter longer. It's really yeah. the opposite of what everybody wants when they do cardio. So, but it's the same kind of thing. Like the tendon research has been out for years and nobody yeah. looks to that. Maybe, no. maybe they didn't look to it because there's no way around it. But X3 completely circumvents the genetic issue. That's cool. Yeah. Right, because it loads you appropriately. Right. Yeah. Right on. No, it's uh, I, the osteo strong, like between that and the X3. I mean that like the first time I came across, it was like, it was another company. They probably copycatted you, but <laughs> I tried their thing. I was like in love. My mind was blown by this. Prog it's basically like progressive resistance as you go through the motion. And especially for like squatting, like I, I do online training. I'm never going to put a barbell on somebody's back, like as, as part of their training program. Cause I'm just too worried about injury. Right. It's not worth We're it. I can't see them. Strength. Yeah. Let me stack some heavy weights on my <laughs> neck because that's how <laughs> animals move stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like ants, but like, it's so it's like asking for injury. And then, but if you can just sit and push, you know, really hard without that, that kind of crazy load, like just compressing into your spine. Like mm -hmm. it just makes so much sense to me. So I, I love what you're doing there. Um, I also wanted to talk to you about, um, you're on the, um, board for steroids and hormonal science and medical journal, yes. the, me yeah. And that medical journal. And I want, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what you were doing there or any cool insights that you gained from your time doing that. Um, It was a good journal. It's a shame it's not around right now. And they're kind of dormant. Uh, I think they chose their name poorly. Mm. Like it just gets got the word steroids in it. So everybody thinks it's about cheating. But, mm -hmm. you know, most people read the title and none of the content and they just jump to a conclusion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's just you don't you don't want a title that implies like something negative. Like yeah. Were basically, the journal, what the journal was about was growth factors, uh, exogenous growth factors, and endogenous, okay. meaning created by your own body. Like mm -hmm. my testosterone, my body you know, demands testosterone because of the receptor side activity. I have receptor side activity because I put heavier loads on the body than anybody else does. Mm. So that's what drives the receptor sites. So it doesn't matter how much testosterone you have in your, in your mm. bloodstream. It matters how many receptors are looking for it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I love that. Right. So gro um, for growth factors, for drugs, and if they don't work out with the heaviest loads on the body possible, like I do, then, you know, they're really not going to get much out of it. One in six males over the age of 18 
have used or are currently using anabolic steroids, how many males over the age of 18 look like, you know, have like an oppressive, like a statue similar physique? Is it one in six? Like people using the drug? No, it's probably more like one in 6,000 or maybe mm -hmm. one in 60,000. Mm -hmm. Like actually, this is why everybody with visible abdominals seems to have like a supplement contract or an affiliate deal on uh, on Instagram. Mm. You know, you know what I mean? It's like everybody yeah. in good shape. It's like, oh, you got to check this out. It's like, oh, this guy's actually making money, but like he's really not that exceptional. He just has visible abdominals. It doesn't right. matter. It's rare. That's yeah. why it's such a big deal. When somebody has a perfect set of abdominals. And he goes to the beach. That's what everybody's talking about. Yeah. Like yeah. it's so rare. Maybe the fitness industry has just been wrong for a long time about just about everything. <laughs> like, why are you defending an industry? Like there's some, there's some studies I quote in the book. Um, you know, let's just say like the, the, the leanest one percentile of men in America and, and body fat is, is like a great measure because it takes muscularity into consideration. The more muscular you become, you drive your percentage of body fat down. Right. So it's 10.9%, uh, basically 11%. That's mm. not impressive at all. That's the best 1%. Mm. The top wow. percentile is almost 11% body fat. That's pathetic. Yeah, on average, wow. Right, so it shows you like a fraction of 1% is really... You know, and uh, mm -hmm. I would say a very small fraction of 1% is, is really who's fit. Yeah. So why are we paying attention to an industry that is, by, by any account that I can find, the most failed human endeavor? Wow. Like, you go to a regular gym, you know, like, uh, not Venice Beach, but a regular one. You go yeah. to, uh, you know, Wichita, and you go into the plan of fitness there, and the yeah. people that are hanging out there don't look any different than the people next door at Pizza Hut. Right. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's evolving and I hope it starts, it keeps evolving in a better way. But if you think about it, I mean, when I was a little kid there, no one went to gyms. There was the YMCA that a few random people. And they all look the same as people do now. Yeah. We have a yeah. long way to go, go to for home. sure. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and I, I also know some, I have some really good friends who are highly intelligent and they, they won't exercise. And I said, well, why don't you exercise? Like, why don't you care? And I, you know, I'm thinking, like, they're looking at me thinking, yeah, I want to look like John Jaquish. But what they're saying is, what they would say to me is, other than you, everybody that I know that goes to a gym doesn't look any different than I do. Mm. No difference. So I think they're all just wasting their time. Mm. I can't figure it out. But I'm certainly not going to act unless I see some strong indicator that there's going to be some serious results wow. there. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I can't help you. I do think everything in a gym is garbage. And, <laughs> and there's a nutrition component too, that nobody wants to actually think of except the reality of, but it's definitely a huge part of, of health and being lean. And yeah, I, I, I feel you on that. And I, I sense your frustration and I do too, because there's, there's a lot of BS out there in the, in the fitness Perfect. world. It's like, it's like, it's a lot of parroting. It's a, and people aren't thinking deeply about things and we're just repeating the same stuff over and over. And I, I mean, I had my little stuff that's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, I mean, for the best thing I think that we can do it, like for you being so experienced, your PhD doctor, you know, having so much time in the industry, living it yourself, just keep leading, just keep leading, keep reaching to and hopefully the right yeah. people will find you. And then they'll, you'll have mentees and they'll start educating and creating their own in-depth um, con uh, insights on things and it will get, but I'm, I, I believe that it will get better and better, you know, mm -hmm. but man, we're kind of in the dark ages for sure. I a hundred percent agree. And like, I mean, speaking of planet fitness, it's like, what, don't they have like pizza nights or something? It's like, what, oh, what's yeah. going on? You know, like, yeah. what, just, what is this? <laughs> metabolic health. Yeah. Uh, so, um, anyway, I, I appreciate your time so much. I won't take much more. You like your career is just like seriously astounding. There's so many different places we could go. I will link everything that we talked about and hinted at in the show notes, as well as some other cool things you guys might want to know about Dr. Jayquish, but thank you. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. And is Absolutely. there anything anywhere you would like to direct people um, that might be interested in partaking of more of what you have to offer? 
So there's two things. One, if you want to find me, I have a landing page, so I don't need to give you like okay. 10 different handles. Cool. It's Perfect. drj.com. Okay. So D-O-C-T-O-R, the letter J.com. Perfect. Uh, so Instagram, YouTube, you can find my products there. You can find my book there. You know, if, if, if you loved everything I said and it made perfect sense to you, buy the products, buy the, yeah. the, the optimized protein. Uh, it's made out of bacterial fermentation. It is actually more usable by the body than steak. And it's, and it's cool with vegans because it's not made out of any animal. It's made from mm. bacterial fermentation, meaning oh, the byproduct cool. of bacteria eating something. Very so cool. uh, even the bacteria didn't die. <laughs> by human cause. I mean, they live their whole life, which is like three days. Uh, so I hate calling them they because it makes it <laughs> weird. Anyway, anyway okay. vegan food. Um, and then, uh, yeah, because there's, there's a lot of vegans now. So I want to help them. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is that I do realize at first I was a real hard ass about nutrition. It's just like eat steak eat your Fortigen, everything else is varying degrees of not really worth eating. Uh, you know, and if you say you can't do it, it's like, you know, you're, you, that's what you are. You're a person who can't. And just look in the mirror and say, I can't, I can't do shit. I'm a loser. <laughs> or just do it right. Like, it's not that hard. It's not that hard to skip breakfast and lunch and eat one meal a day. So you get a fasted benefit every day. Mm -hmm. It's not that, well, it, but here's the thing I found out. Apparently it is that hard because there are people who email me and they act like they're going to die if they can't have their pizza. And it's like, okay, imagine I showed up at your house and I kidnapped you. I just took you out of the country and we got dropped off in sub-Saharan Africa. There's nothing to eat except animals that we have to hunt first. <laughs> I would like to do that with just about everybody, but I'm pinched for time, so I can't. <laughs> so just it, like imagine, like you're not being deprived. You just can't have it. Like mm -hmm. you're just not going to have pizza today. You're in your sub-Saharan Africa. Hey, where's the nearest, uh, you know, uh, uh, Little Caesars? The tribesmen will look at you and be like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, but there's some wildebeest over there and we were going to go get one of those. How about some of that? Yeah. So, right. And it's just like, and you notice the tribal people are in incredible shape. <laughs> like it's not yeah. a mystery. Yeah. So, so I would say, you know, don't, you got to take the word can't out of your vocabulary and say, I don't want to. Right. There's a lot Huge. of things I don't want to do. I don't want to get out of bed in the morning. It's much nicer to just stay there. I don't want to get out of the hot tub, especially right. when I got a drink in my hand, but <laughs> okay. You know, sometimes we just got to do things. So yeah. So I tell people, and I'm taking a much more, I'm, I'm building a new nutrition program that keeps, it's actually going to be optimized by having a little bit of carbohydrates. And, and I also talk about the hyperplasia protocol where I've been, I, there, we now have evidence that shows that carbohydrates are not even a macronutrient. Like we don't need them at all, but there is a way to apply them to get some better results in, in, if you're a distance runner, I can give you some better results there. And if you're, if you're doing uh, resistance training, you can grow muscle faster by super hydrating a muscle. Mm. Um, right. And, and the best way to super hydrate is to dehydrate first. And mm. so I'm working on a, some programming that is really going to be helpful to people who don't quite have the self-control I do, mm -hmm. but will also be very beneficial. Super cool. We'll look yeah. forward to that. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, stay tuned. Yeah. Follow me on Instagram. Yeah. Definitely follow them on Instagram. So much good content. And I guess you'll direct them everywhere they can go to learn more about all these things that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Jake Wish, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for bringing really cool insights that'll keep me thinking about ligaments and bones and, and angles. I, I love everything that you're bringing to the table. So thank you so much. Perfect. It's fun for me too. <laughs>